emphasis provides world class online IT training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide H2K emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes H2K emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide for a free demo class visit us at h2kemphasis.com okay so how what 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 thing happens here basically okay so before jdk 1.5 this looping construct was not there all right now when the jdk 1.5 came into picture this for loop came into picture okay usually before if you see any of the code uh, in the real time most of the uh, most of the places you will see this but once in jdk 1.5 they will they have started using all these things okay we say this as your enhanced for loop what is this your enhanced for loop okay below is is the enhanced for loop now what happens basically you are saying that for each integer in this particular array that means for each integer 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it is going to loop all right now here i'm just saying i'm just taking some conditions here instead of that what i'm doing is i'm just saying for integer int int i or int a i n t in int array loop that many times the the number of times you have the length of the array here so ultimately if you see this statement as well as this statement both are same but this is your enhanced for loop okay so this loop we will use it uh, down the line when we talk about collections also okay and uh, just remember this because uh, this is very important because uh, when we talk about the ui layer okay and we'll talk about some frameworks also uh you will uh, start understanding what is a uh, enhanced for loop is all about okay because in that case we'll we'll talk about uh, something which will be very similar to this enhanced for loop so which will be easier for you to understand things okay so whatever thing i mean if it is a byte array or an integer array or anything uh, you can basically use it in this way okay and this is only used for your arrays all right so here we are just talking about an uh, array here when we talk about collections also we can use the same here all right uh yeah the question is uh, why do we need to have it, have to declare an integer for the loop okay uh let me remove this for sure you'll get a compilation issue now why we are doing it here because you know that you are trying to access an integer array here right so you are trying to loop an integer here right so each time it loops what it does from from the bucket so let's think this as a bucket okay so from this bucket each time i'm going to access this one and push that one to here okay and the same one i'm printing it here okay now uh your java is strictly your uh, type uh, sensitive here okay if you say something like int j equals to i cannot assign a string let's say uh, jram okay i cannot assign my j uh, jram as a string to an integer okay so in that case i need a string itself so the data type should match from your left to right or right to left okay so as we are trying to access the integers from the from this bucket or from this array we have to hold that value in a particular integer value itself we cannot use a string here okay if it would have been a different kind of array let's say here if i say uh let me take byte and let me say byte array okay 
So let me make it as 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. And here, uh, let me say for byte, okay, uh, b equals to, sorry, b in your byte array. The same thing I can just print here, sys out. Okay, of b. So this is the way we can basically do it and we can loop through uh, your any kind of array. Did that answer your question? Run as Java application. Okay, so depending on the data type, what you're what you're trying to use here, you're supposed to use that particular data type here. All right. Uh, okay, the question might be here. I'm able to use an integer here also, right? Run as Java application. Okay, even though if I'm using an integer, I'm good here. Why? Because as we know, uh, this is your byte short int long. It is of type kind of an integer, right? So you can use any of these things here. All right, but make sure, let's say, if you say byte uh, b1 equals to, as I said, the range of your uh, byte is, if you use your 128, okay? Okay, the range of your byte is from minus 126 to 127, right? So that's what we have learned in the previous classes. Now, if you see here, if I am just trying to push 128 here, I'm getting a compilation issue, right? What it says, uh, mismatch cannot convert from integer to byte because I know that or this compiler knows that uh, your 128 is beyond your byte range. Okay, byte is always your, uh, the range of your byte is minus 126 to plus 127. All right. So here if I'm using a byte also, it doesn't matter uh, because the, the uh, integer is your more superset of your byte. All right, it, it has got a uh, more wider range for that. Okay, so any questions on this guys, uh, you can just ping me now. All right. Let's move ahead. Uh, so that is what we saw here for each version of the for loop. Uh, we, we use a kind of a collection or an array here, right? So with the help of that, we, we were able to iterate through the complete uh, array here. Now, uh, there is one more uh, looping here. Uh, that is a while loop. So let me create one more class here. New class while loop example. while loop while to while finish okay all right so before even going uh, getting into this let me just tell you one one more example here uh, how will you uh, loop infinite time okay that means i want that my loop should be infinite i mean it should keep looping looping again and again and again okay so you can use the same for loop here and you can just say double columns semicolons okay so now if i just say system dot out dot println of let's say I just want to declare a value uh, int uh, let's say infinite index okay uh, and I'll just say here infinite So just say infinite here and uh, plus I'll just access the 
now again if suppose you are very lazy to type in here you can just say type i n and say control space okay it will give you all the suggestions uh, on what all things you can use it here okay so i just enter here by accessing this one uh, so i have to initialize this i'll talk about this as well So let me make it as plus plus. So now let's see. Let's uh, once I run this program, let's see what's going to happen. Right click, run as Java application. See, it keeps on uh, looping and it is it is not even stopping here, right? So with the help of this particular construct, okay, you can basically keep looping your loop at uh, I mean infinite time. So there is no point you can stop it here, right? Uh, we will talk about it how we are going to stop this loop with a particular condition and uh, yes let me just stop this now all right okay so this is the way uh, we can loop it infinite times and uh, guys i'm going to check in this file uh, i'll tell you what is check in and what is check out okay there is some problem with the audio all right so let's get into the uh, while and do while loop what is a while and what is a do while loop so let me just go here and uh, let me say while loop condition okay uh let me take a value int i equals to 10 okay now i'll take int j equals to let's say 0 and i'm going to say here uh, while j is less than 10 okay I'll, uh, okay let me just take this as less than 10 okay uh just print system sys trace plus j okay and let me just say j plus plus because if i do not use this when it comes here you have already declared a value as j equals to 0 and you are saying while Okay, so this is a while loop. This is how you are supposed to use a while loop. While j is less than 10, that means here it is always 10, and it keeps right click run as Java application, right? It keeps running this. I mean, running this program because each and every time it comes here, it checks. Okay, j is less than 10 because j is zero. Uh, j is less than 10. Always it comes and hits this condition while loop. So this loops keep on uh, looping it infinite um, uh, number of times. Okay. let me stop this now what do i need to do in order to stop this loop i am going to say while j is less than 10 come inside print this and then increment the value of j okay now if i just put a trace here uh what happens here the program comes here show the line number the program come to line number 7 and then it comes to line number 9 it keeps on looping unless and until uh, it does i mean once it comes here again it goes here what it comes here again it goes here right so this is what your while loop is and what condition it checks if inside the while condition this condition is true then only it comes here and prints some information here okay now here my condition is while j is less than 10 come inside this and then increment the value of j and you have already seen that if i am not using this if i am just coming commenting this out i am going to a infinite loop here okay which i do not need that i want that when the value of j is less than 10 okay then only keep looping when the moment it is 10 okay so just come out so if i run this run as java application 
Now, if you can see, it has only printed from 0 to 9. It is not even printed 10 also. Okay, because each and every time it comes here, it increments the value of j. So let me just run this as in a debug mode. Debug as Java application. Uh, say yes. Remember my decision. Yes. Okay. All right. So let me just debug this. Let me increase the length here. So it keeps saying F6, right? So it comes here. Uh, the value of uh, J, if you see the variables here. Okay. So the value of J is your zero. Put this out link here. You can keep shuffling all this uh, views. Okay. So if you can see the value of j, it keeps on. Now j is plus j plus plus. Now the value of j is one. Now again, I it comes to the while loop because I I and keep pressing f f six. Okay, and now f six is here. Nothing but here. Uh, where is f six? Step over. Okay. So it keeps on going to the next line, next line, next line. So I keep on pressing this. This value keeps on increasing. Okay. So the moment it checks, let's see. Let's keep doing this. And now the value of, okay, it will come here still. Now the value of J is 10. Now it has come out of the loop. Okay. So this is your while loop with the help of that. You can check for some condition. If the condition is satisfying, you keep looping this one. Otherwise it goes out of the loop. Okay. Now, uh, question is, at what point of time will you use your while loop and what point of time you will be using your for loop okay now uh, in for loop you are pretty sure uh, you know the length of the array okay uh, and you are looping it here using what i mean the length of the uh, i mean length of this particular index length okay so with the help of this you are basically looping but still you can do the same functionality what you have done it using a while loop. You, I can even achieve using my for loop, but I have to do some tweaks. Okay. Let's not go into that right now, but still there's a possibility for you. You can do that as well. All right. So when you know the, the, you know that you're accessing an array. Okay. And you know the fixed length and you know the, what is the length right now? You loop it very well. Okay. Now, when you use a while loop, uh, you do not know what is the length and you are just, you are actually dependent on a particular condition. Okay. Uh, in that case, you will very well go with a while loop. Okay. And you, let's say, for example, in this case, we'll see down the line also a lot of other examples. This is just your starting point to understand what is a while loop. All right. We'll see a lot of other examples down the line uh, to understand how, at what point of time you'll use a while loop and what point of time you'll use a for loop and uh, what not. Okay. So this is all about your while loop. Uh, let me just comment this out. There is one more that is your do while. Okay. And the syntax is do this. Okay. Do something inside this while the condition is true. Okay. Now let's just try to execute this one right now. Uh, let's say do okay let me just take one more value here int k equals to 0 uh, k less than 10 okay uh, so here I just want to print the same thing here it says trace and plus k and same k plus plus okay now let's see the difference between these two uh, sys trace So here what's happening, it is first checking for a condition. If the condition is true, then only it comes inside. So let's first 
show you the output of this. Let me use print so that I can print everything in a single line itself. And use my only, I don't even need all these things. I just use a space here. Okay. Uh, this one. This. So let me run this uh, and then we'll discuss about this run as Java application, right? So here what I'm doing basically is I, okay, what is this? Print. Okay. Okay. So here, if you can see the output is both the same, right? And first it is doing some condition here. Okay. And it is it is it, it is incrementing here, and after that you are having a condition here, right? Now ultimately both the things are same. The only thing is you are using a do while here. Okay, first do while what it does it prints, and then it checks on the condition. Okay, and if the condition is not true, it won't even go to the do condition. Okay, uh, just to enhance this one. while k is still less than 10, 9, okay? So run as Java application. And if you can see here, the first time it came here, okay? It printed this, incremented this, and then it checked on the condition, right? Unless until k is less than 9. The moment the k is 9, all right, it, it is not even coming to this condition. Okay, so more or the less you can achieve the same thing using a while loop or a do while loop. But when you use a do while loop, you are making sure that you want to print something first and then check for that condition. Okay, so there are three kind of loops here: for loop, while loop, or a do while loop. Okay. Most of the time, in real time, you will use your while loop or do while loop. Sorry, while loop or your for loop here. Okay, and in the for loop again, you can your you will be uh, using your enhanced for loop. Okay, any questions, guys? Here. No questions. All right, so uh, I think we won't be having much time today. So let me do one thing. Let me start uh, checking in this file and I'll tell you right now uh, how to check out the file and how to work on these examples. Okay, now let me just go to my Java perspective. Uh, right click, what I did is I have got some repository which I'll tell you what to do. I'll just right click on this team commit. Okay, so I have done changes in a lot of files. So let me choose all these files and uh, just say updates, commit and push. Uh, all right, it says cannot open GIT receive pack. Looks like there is some problem here. Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll, I'll just check in the file later. Uh, let me just show you how to check out this uh, this particular module. Run the background. All right. Now, what you have to do is the very first thing is uh, you have to have the GIT repository in your own machine. Okay. For that reason, what you have to do is you just need to go to your windows, open perspective, others, and just to click on your GIT. Right. So let me, I'll just ping you one link here. Uh, let's say for example, let me go here and 
copy this and keep it somewhere in my desktop okay now uh, just think that we I have already checked in this file which I have done it uh, I've got a couple of files there so let me just delete this okay and go to my GIT and just do a fresh checkout delete repository delete delete okay now my eclipse is a pretty new eclipse nothing is there right now so what am i going to do is uh, uh, there is a repository in the in the internet okay so what you guys need to do is you just need to copy this i'll i'll just uh, send you this particular url let me ping you right now Control v enter right so what you do this just uh, just copy that the one which i pinged to everyone come to your eclipse and right click on this gid repository okay so how do you open this gid repository windows open perspective others gid okay so when you open this on the left hand side just right click on this and just say paste or you can just say control v also so the moment you paste it you get this particular pop up wherein you 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 see all this informations already present there okay so for you you don't have to use your uh, username and password uh, for me i need to use it you just say next it's taking a time incorrect url it's correct oh internet my hello Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis: How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.